Now last year, I was fortunate enough to get a review unit for the ThinkPad X1 Nano, a super light, super portable, business-focused laptop that was really meant to be taken on the road. Now business executives, consumers alike, all loved it because of its portability, and it had a pretty nice 2K display, and it also had pretty nice processing power, but a little bit underpowered for some power users. Well, that all changes with Gen 2. Now, I just took delivery of the X1 Nano Gen 2. I did a live unboxing for it, so if you didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. But I've been putting it through its paces ever since, benchmarking it, and seeing pretty much tremendous improvements when it comes to the processor. Yes, this is running the Core i7-1280P, a 28-watt CPU. That's a big improvement. But we're going to test out the battery life, we'll show the display, we'll test out the thermals, and everything you need to know about this super ultra portable. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the ThinkPad X1 Nano Gen 2, all new for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing for the X1 Nano Gen 2 starts at $1,385.45. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And here's what's new with the X1 Nano. You can now get it with up to a 12th Gen Intel Core V Pro processor. It's the lightest ThinkPad out there, weighing just 970 grams or 2.14 pounds. You can get this with the optional 5G connectivity. It's got advanced biometric and AI-based security. It's also military spec rated for durability and to endure extreme conditions. You can outfit this with up to 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM. It's got an upgraded camera here this time around. It's a full HD infrared camera with a webcam privacy shutter and it now has wi-fi 6e along with bluetooth 5.2 and with the specs and pricing out of the way let's find out what you get inside the box let's open it up biodegradable material this thing is so light i could tell already and let's just take everything out okay so we have the unit here and i can tell you without even taking it out oh my god is that light all right, so we get some documentation in this envelope here. And uh, let's see, we've got the ThinkPad X1 Nano Gen 2. Okay, some of the smart features, I guess. Uh, presence detections, walk away, lock, stuff like that. Let's take a look at the power charger. So we got your extension cord there. We'll look at that in a moment. It's 65 watt. This might be the smallest 65 watt USB-C charger I've seen. It's that small. I mean, look at this thing. Yeah, it's 65 watt, you can see it there. And then of course, the star of the show, we get the Nano. It never ceases to amaze me every time I pick up the X1 Nano, just how incredibly thin and light this is. Again, 970 grams, 2.14 pounds. This thing, you just throw it in your bag, you hardly even notice it's there. This is a great travel companion, especially for the mobile professional who wants to have the 5G connectivity. You're always connected, and this thing hopefully will get good battery life. We'll check it all out later on in this review. And of course, this has that ThinkPad durability made out of carbon fiber and magnesium. That's a lightweight material used. It's an alloy, of course, and it also can take a licking and keep on ticking, undergoing a series of military grade testing. And just like last year's model, the lid opens with one finger and it's 180 degree hinge, so it always gives you the perfect viewing angle each and every time. Now, one of the things I love about the ThinkPad line is the excellent keyboard that you get. And as thin and light as the Nano is, it still has a great keyboard. I love the tactility, decent key travel, and it really never feels like your fingers are gonna bottom out. Very comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. It also has a multi-stage backlight, which allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. It worked well. White against the dark keys really helps you see the contrast. And it's also a spill-resistant keyboard, so if you spill coffee or water on it, this has a chance to survive. That's pretty cool. And it has a precision trackpad that worked well, very responsive when it comes to scrolling, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. 
and it has the track point, an inherent part of the ThinkPad DNA, and that was pretty responsive as well. That's going to be great on an airplane tray when you need to navigate in a tight space. Uh, work well. I have no complaints. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side, you get your headphone microphone combo jack and then two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function supporting data charge and display out. Moving over to the right side is a cooling vent and next to that is the power button with an LED indicator light within it letting you know the device is powered on. Notably missing, no USB-A, no HDMI and no SD card reader of any sort. A little bit lacking in the ports, that's for sure. And once again, Lenovo makes it really easy to get inside this laptop. All you need to do is loosen the four captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. It's that easy. And once inside, you notice that it has a single fan for cooling. We'll get into the thermals, fan noise, and surface temperatures later on in this review. And it has a 49.6 watt hour battery. And considering the size of this unit, it's not a bad size battery. We'll get into the battery life and charging times later on as well. Now you can get this with up to 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM and it's running in dual channel mode. Now this is the 5200 megahertz RAM and it's the faster RAM we'd like to see. Now of course this RAM is soldered into the motherboard so you as the user won't be able to upgrade it later on. Make sure you get enough RAM for your needs when you're checking out. But the SSD is user upgradable and that is always good. So this unit has one terabyte of SSD storage, but judging by these speeds in terms of the reads and the writes, this is Gen 3, not the faster Gen 4 we'd like to see here in 2022. But the good news is you can change it out, of course, yourself, and that will give you the ability to get a faster speeds with the Gen 4, that's for sure. But don't get me wrong, these are certainly fast enough for anything you really throw at it. It just would be nice to have the fastest out there right now, and that would be the Gen 4. Now, when it comes to the wireless, this has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2. Now, this combo card is soldered into the motherboard, so you as the user won't be able to upgrade it down the road. But as far as the wireless is concerned, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth both have been working very well. No issues on either front. And I love the fact that you can get this with the optional 4G LTE, it's a CAT16 modem, or even the Qualcomm Snapdragon X55 5G modem, which uses the Sub6 standard. And that's a great option to go with, especially if you're the road warrior, the executive on the road that needs always on connection wherever you go. Now there are two options for the display. They're both uh, 13 point now, there are two options when it comes to the display. It's, this is a 13-inch display, 2160 by 1350. Now, I have the anti-glare with Dolby Vision. It's a matte display, and it's really bright. Now, they claim 450 nits. I actually measured 465 nits above what they claim. That's really good. And there's also a touch display with an anti-reflective coating that also could get as bright as 450 nits, as they claim, and also 100% sRGB. But I'm really happy with this non-touch display because of that matte coating the anti-glare on it. It's great. It helps reduce the glare and reflections, depending, of course, of your lighting conditions, but it's done a really good job. Now, it's also bright, as I mentioned, 465 nits, has really deep blacks, good contrast, good white point, and it has decent coverage, not the greatest coverage of the color gamut. So for things like Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, and stuff like that, you'll be okay. It's 100% sRGB, but there are better displays out there. But again, at a 13-inch ultra-portable laptop, you're really not doing that kind of work in my opinion this is more of a travel companion to get work done on the road but it is a very color accurate display with a 1.53 delta e score remember anything below two means it's color accurate this doesn't disappoint Consuming media on this, watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube has been great on this display. So if you're on the road, you want to catch a movie here and there on Netflix or whatever, you have a nice display to really check everything out and to enjoy your content viewing. And this being an IPS display, the viewing angles have been excellent. Again, with a 180 degree hinge, you always will get the perfect viewing angle each and every time. I like that. Now, there's no 4K option on this. This is a 2K display. And with a 13 inch display, I think 4K would be overkill and it really would take a hit on the battery. And there's no option for a higher refresh rate. This is 60 hertz, but no option for 90 or 120. But of course, that would also take away from the battery life. So I understand going with 60 hertz on a business-focused laptop it makes total sense. But my overall takeaway is this is an excellent display and you won't be disappointed. But if you want that touchscreen, that is also an option to go with, that's for sure. So this is the front-facing camera on the brand new ThinkPad X1 Nano Gen 2 here for 2022. 
Now, one thing to note, this is a 1080p camera. It's a full HD. It's also an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. And there's also a shutter switch to give you more security and privacy. Bunch of other security features, including presence detection and auto framing, I think might also be here. We'll check it. And there's also a fingerprint scanner located next to the touchpad below the keyboard. So a lot of security features here. Very clear, very nice. I think it's going to be good for your Zoom calls, and I think it's going to be good for your work from home needs. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. And we have a slightly bigger battery this time around at 49.6 watt hours. That's up from the 48 watt hours from Gen 1. And it did eight hours and 45 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi Fi at 150 nits. That translates into six to seven hours of real world mixed usage, of course, depending on what you're doing. Now, please keep in mind everybody's use case is a little bit different, so your mileage may vary. And as you can see, that's not as good as last year when it comes to battery life, which did 12 hours and 58 minutes on that same test. But of course, this is a much more powerful processor that you got last year, and that's of course going to use up more power. So of course, battery life will not be as good this time around. Now this does support rapid charge and it takes about an hour and 25 minutes to give you a full charge with the supplied 65 watt USB-C power adapter. I also love the fact that it's super compact as well. Okay, let's talk performance, and this is a big improvement over last year's processor. This now has a Core i7-1280p that has 14 cores, 8 efficiency cores, and 6 performance cores. And as you can see from these numbers, year over year, a big improvement indeed. Now this 28 watt CPU I think is a pretty big improvement over last year's quad core CPU and you see it in the numbers as you can see better PC Mark 10 score, better single core, better multi core performance. In fact, it's more than double in terms of multi core performance over last year's Gen 1 model. Doing everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, everything handled with ease, and it also could do 1080p video editing, but anything more processor intensive, 3D rendering, or any kind of 4K video editing, I would look for something with a discrete GPU. After all, this has integrated Iris XE graphics with 96 executional units, and to be honest, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth. Now, I've done plenty of videos when it comes to gaming on the Iris XE graphics, the integrated solution employed here. So I'm not going to repeat it here. But for those that want to know, if you're looking for gaming on this laptop as being the main thing you're going to do with it, of course, this does have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. If you want to connect to an external GPU, that may be a good option if you want more graphics horsepower. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, it would reach a core temperature of 98 degrees Celsius and maintain pretty high temperatures and high clock speeds showing good performance, but it did warm up. That's for sure, but very little, if any, thermal throttling, which is pretty interesting. And there's a single fan for cooling, and it didn't go above 38, 39 decibels when I ran it in performance mode, putting it under heavy load, running the, some of the heavy benchmarks, such as Cinebench R23, running the Prime 95 stress test. Again, that's pretty good. Not too loud, so it's not too distracting when you're trying to get work done. Now, when you put it into the other modes, remain relatively quiet, coming on intermittently when needed. Now, as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, it did get pretty hot above the keyboard, as you see that hot spot right here, and on the underside, as I'm pointing out right here, when I put it under heavy load, when I was running the Cinebench R23, a heavy sustained workload test that would account for any thermal throttling, and it certainly heats up, as you see here. Now, when it comes to the speakers, they're Dolby Atmos audio system. And I got to say, the mids were good. The bass was good. The volume was really good and fills up a room rather nicely, especially for an ultra portable, not something we see every day. Now, to give an example of the speakers on this laptop, let's listen to Epidemic Sound. And if you want to save 10% off Epidemic Sound, see the link in the description below. Now, let's give this a listen.
Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano Gen 2 here in 2022? And I got to say a tremendous improvement when it comes to the CPU performance over last year's Gen 1. But that comes at a cost. That would be the battery life, which took a hit. That's what we're seeing with the 12th Gen P-Series processors so far here for 2022. But even with the reduced battery life, you're getting a sleek package with a really nice 2K display that weighs less than one kilogram. I don't think you can go wrong especially if you're an executive on the go i'm gonna give this a score of 89 percent making the x1 nano gen 2 here for 2022 definitely worth your money so what do you think about this bad boy the x1 nano gen 2 and as you can see the basic black on this one you can get it with the carbon fiber weave if you go with the touchscreen model and you can see fingerprints already showing on this video. But of course, if you wipe it down, I love this iconic ThinkPad black on it. It's the really iconic look. I really like it. Now at 970 grams or about 2.14 or so pounds, this thing is super light and portable. Throw it in your bag. You hardly will notice that it's there. Now, as far as performance is concerned, big improvement over last year, which didn't have the most powerful CPU, but this one changes the story, ladies and gentlemen. P-Series stands for performance, and this certainly follows through with that. This is a 28 watt CPU performance in terms of the 14 cores, eight efficiency cores, six performance cores, V Pro, by the way. And we're seeing the big numbers, more than double when it comes to multi-core performance year over year. That's pretty good. But while we're seeing a big improvement when it comes to the performance, not so much when it comes to the battery life. In fact, it did less than last year, and that's because of this processor. I'm pretty sure of it. 12th gen, Alder Lake P-Series, definitely going to use more power, 28 watt CPU, of course. So you're seeing about eight hours and 45 minutes on my continuous web serving test. That's a six to seven hour of mixed use in my estimation. So uh, definitely took a little bit of a regression when it comes to battery life. So for those road warriors, look at Gen 1 on sale if you need the longevity. But this wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either. Now throw in the fact that you can get this with the optional 5G, that might take a little bit more battery life, but it does give you that always on connection that the business traveler will need, especially when they're doing business on the road. This is gonna be a great option. Now, another big area of improvement was the webcam. Now this is a full HD, IR webcam. It's 1080p up from the 720p from last year, and we're seeing a big improvement. It's got presence detection. It has really good clarity. It all sound was good also coming out of that. So video conferencing is definitely going to be a go on this. Definitely an improvement over last year with a starting price of around 1300 or so dollars. Not a bad option, especially if you need something truly ultra portable. 5G connection that's optional, of course. 2K display, it's a nice little package to take with you on the go. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.